Honestly, I struggle to believe it's been over two whole years since we first heard about GitHub Copilot. Back when it first came out, I did a video on the topic. My old format looks so bad. And since then, absolutely none of the legal issues have actually changed. It is still an absolute legal nightmare to make use of this tool. Being a large language model, it just vacuums up all the public code on GitHub and just smashes it together, does some like magic AI stuff and spits out a result to a prompt that in many cases actually is pretty good. The problem is the code on GitHub. There is GPL v2, GPL v3, MIT, Vim license, Apache and a bunch of others and the result you get doesn't take that into consideration, so are you allowed to actually use that code? That's still a question that needs to be answered. As such, there is an ongoing lawsuit against Microsoft, GitHub and OpenAI in California, which they tried to get dismissed, which thankfully the judge rejected. So at this stage, it's just a matter of uh, wait and see, I guess. If I was running a dev studio, I wouldn't be touching this tool because it's really unclear if any of the code you write is even allowed to exist. But Microsoft certainly thinks it is fine. From a blog post in September, Microsoft announces new Copilot copyright commitment for customers. Specifically this part right here. This new commitment extends our existing intellectual property indemnity support to commercial Copilot services and builds on our previous AI customer commitments. Specifically, if a third party sues a commercial customer for copyright infringement for using Microsoft's Copilots or the outputs they generate, we will defend the customer and pay the amount of any adverse judgment or settlements that result from the lawsuit. As long as the customer used the guardrails and content filters we have built into our products. Now, I have doubts if they would actually honor this in most situations. I imagine they would probably try to weasel themselves out of it, at least after a couple of good news stories. However, knowing that Microsoft has a potential to be backing a company that you might want to sue for blatant license infringement sort of acts as a pretty good deterrent. Most people don't want to get involved in a lawsuit against a company as big as Microsoft unless they're also a company as big as Microsoft. But here's the thing. I don't expect the lawsuit to do anything. I expect it to fail. And I expect Copilot to just keep doing what it's always been doing. And that's just the way it is. Even if something does happen, thanks to a lot of the recent AI research on large language models, making these systems is a lot easier than ever. And there are a lot of countries out there that simply don't care about US law, that don't care about software licensing, that are more than happy to build these systems anyway. With that being the case, and all of you having been successfully blackpilled, let's talk about the things the new version of Copilot lets you do. So this is a recent blog post from GitHub, Universe 2023. Copilot transforms GitHub into the AI-powered developer platform. So this piece mainly focuses on a product called GitHub Copilot Chat, which kind of feels like a bunch of words slammed together, but the naming does make sense. So initially, Copilot was a lot simpler of a tool. You would write a prompt in your editor, and it would generate something based on that prompt. This initially was based on the Codex model, which was a modified version of GPT-3. Nowadays, though, it is going to be based on OpenAI's GPT-4, and there is a chat version of GPT called ChatGPT. So, a version of GitHub Copilot that you can chat to is GitHub Copilot Chat. This is going to be generally available in December of 2023, and assuming a lot of the things they show are actually useful in most contexts, I think a lot of what it does can actually be useful, ignoring all of the legal and moral issues of the way it actually functions. For example, say you have these really annoying regexes and you have no idea what they actually do. Well, with GitHub Copilot Chat, you can highlight that bit of text and then have it explain it to you. And if maybe the answer it gives you isn't great, or maybe you want certain extra things explained, you can then ask it additional questions and it will further expand upon that explanation. And that's not just a thing for regexes, you can have it try to explain the code, pull requests, various pieces of documentation, 
and just general coding questions directly in the GitHub interface. You might think, ah, oh, if you're a good developer, you're not going to need these things explained. But all of us will check documentation from time to time. All of us will go and have someone try to explain something to us. All this is doing is doing it through an AI powered system. And once again, assuming what it is telling you isn't complete nonsense, which in many cases it is because large language models like to hallucinate, when it's not doing that, the result it gives you can actually be really useful. Along with this, you can iterate on code with AI powered inline copilot chat. With the new inline copilot chat, developers can chat about specific lines of code directly within the flow of their code and editor. There are slash commands for automatically generating a fix and automatically generating tests. This one I think will work really well for the boilerplate sort of test. You have a function, it takes in a variable, you want a range test, you want to go above the highest supported number, below the lowest supported number, something in the normal range, you want to throw some garbage input at it, things like that this could do without any problem whatsoever. But my problem is when you start seeing developers that are less experienced, that end up relying on these tools sort of as like a crutch rather than something they collaborate with. As something where you're like, okay, this is an idea I have, what can I do with this? That works fine. But when you're just saying, okay, do this thing for me, and then you submit that as a merge request to whatever project you're trying to merge it into, that's when we start seeing problems. And I worry for the open source maintainers that they're going to get just a lot more garbage they have to sift through that is not at all usable for the project. Along with this, with those tests, I worry that it's going to give people sort of this false sense of safety. The tests they generate, all of them pass, but it's very likely there's something outside of the test range that it's just not noticing it should be testing. Now, for those enterprise users, which for some reason really, really trust Microsoft, with the GitHub Copilot Enterprise, you can have Copilot personalized to your specific organization. So you can have it vacuum up all of your private repos and then start generating results based on what you do internally. Now, assuming you have some level of, you know, coding standard and you have a lot of code that it can sift through, this is going to give you a lot more personalized results. The problem is, are you sure that Microsoft aren't using your private repos to go and further enhance their public version of Copilot? If I had some pretty important code that I didn't want to make public, I certainly wouldn't be trusting it. To be fair, I probably wouldn't have that code on GitHub either. But as an enterprise user, I can see how GitHub is making a compelling argument. In its early stages as an autocomplete function offered in the IDE, GitHub Copilot was already making developers 55% faster. But developers often write code only around two hours a day and are often bogged down with mundane tasks across the software development lifecycle. What's more, developers spend more time deciphering rather than shipping when they can't pinpoint and solve issues, bugs, or vulnerabilities that are unique to an organization's code base. For your team of developers to deploy at the speed and scale that you need to lead in the market, your developers must be empowered with AI at every step of the software development lifecycle customized and fine-tuned to your code base. With Copilot Chat, they're offering more than just Copilot itself. They want to foster an ecosystem built on Copilot with the GitHub Copilot Partner Program. So Copilot is going to be great at the general sort of questions, but there might be a model that is more specialized to a specific task, in which case it probably gives you a much better result in that field. And this is what it lets you do. They're allowing these other models to be added, so you can go and question those ones and just see what sort of result it's going to give you. Initially, there's going to be 25 debut partners. And if for whatever reason, you happen to be running a model that you want to get involved with this, you can apply to be an early access partner. This could still be terrible, but if this is the route we're going down, having these specialized systems just seems like a better idea to do, like having the specialized version of Copilot that is focused around your specific internal code bases. Now, putting aside all of the code generation stuff that is questionably good, there is one part that I really struggle to argue against. That is the AI-powered security features with GitHub Advanced Security. 
So oftentimes when you make a pull request, you might make some form of mistake. Maybe you introduce a cross-site scripting attack. Maybe you forget to escape a character. Maybe you include a secret like a private key, an SSH key, things like that, that should have been loaded in through a variable. These are things you definitely don't want to be in the code base. So this will scan the code and be like, yo, maybe doing that is a bad idea and will give you the explanation for why, where in the code it's happening, and you can also read up upon the exploit. Now, this is a suggestion. It is not a hard set rule. So if you disagree with it being a problem, or maybe your intention is to just have the code being broken, you can still commit it. But having this as just like an early warning, I feel is going to stop a lot of these problems. I have committed secrets before, like a stream key. And doing that is um less than ideal. And I'm sure that every single one of us has forgotten to sanitize user input here and there. If you haven't, you haven't written enough code. And having something like that be spotted before it actually makes its way into the code base is certainly nice, especially if it's something, you know, kind of mission critical. All of these features are available in the current preview and are going to be available in the general release. But there is one thing they do want to show that isn't available just yet. That being GitHub Copilot workspaces. The idea here is that you have some form of pull request. In this case, show GitHub handles when a gallery cell is active. Okay, fair enough. Now, you might not understand the steps you need to take to actually deal with this problem. It might be something fairly complicated and you're not really sure how to break the problem down. What you can do is open up a workspace and then work with Copilot on a way to get this done. It will break down the specification, it will break down a proposed solution, and will step you through everything you would need to do to actually deal with the problem. And this plan can actually be modified each step of the way. So if you don't agree with something it's doing, and you're like, okay, that's not really the best way to do it, or that really doesn't make any sense in this code base, like it's trying to bring in a new library or something like that, you can say, okay, we're not doing that, we're gonna do this instead. And because this is all about collaboration, Everything in here is fully modifiable. After that, you can then have it try and implement the code. Now, once again, because this is all about collaboration, it will show you all of the changes it tries to make. And all of these changes can be modified before you go to make a pull request. You can have it go and test everything to make sure it all builds and that's all fine. But you can modify these changes along the way and then be like, okay, this is what I want to do or no, I'm not going to do it. But once again from earlier, this works just fine if you're actually using it as a collaboration tool and something to sort of automate the boring parts you don't really want to deal with. Ah, you need to have this import. The import was obviously going to be there. You need to do this and all of these are like boilerplate things. But for those developers who aren't that experienced, there are going to be developers out there who just blindly follow what this is saying and assume okay because it builds and okay the result looks fine that means it must all work perfectly fine with no problems at all that's where i really worry for the open source maintainers so for any of you out there expect garbage prs that look like they're ai written because in many cases they probably are going to be Speaking of garbage, they also have a vision of the future they call GitHub Copilot X, the AI-powered developer experience. Now, a lot of the things in this post are similar to what we've already seen, but there is one thing in particular I really don't like. That being this for pull requests. So, this will allow you to automatically generate a description for a pull request, and it does a good job at describing what is changing. The problem is that's not the only thing you need in a pull request. The code explains what you are changing. This doesn't explain the why. Why are you doing this? Why is this a good solution? Why does it fit with our general design of the project? That is the far more important thing when you open up a pull request. As for something less garbage, they are making a CLI version of Copilot, which, you know, probably is fine. It's just text anyway, so it's just text in a different format. 
I don't have a problem with that. Right now, there is a waiting list for that, and it is not going to be available for a while. Some point in the future. Honestly, from a purely technical perspective, I think the idea of GitHub Copilot and GitHub Copilot Chat and GitHub Copilot CLI is really, really cool. But I do have serious problems with the fact that it just scoops up all of this open source code and ignores every single license in the code bases. So, as much as I think it's cool, I'd prefer that it didn't exist. But let me know what you guys think. Do you make use of Copilot? Do you think it's really cool? Do you think it's a waste of time and not really that useful? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And this video was AI generated. Like this.